We're here in the piano shops over our Robert Lowry showroom where we refurbish and repair over 500 used pianos a year to customers all over the world. So we're on a mission to turn used piano buying into a classy, safe, and fun experience. Without further ado, let's dive into our first mistake people make when buying a used piano. Size matters, except when it doesn't. The internet is littered with advice on new piano sizing, which in spirit is helpful, but in practice can be extremely unproductive or just flat out wrong. Many customers enter the research phase of their piano shopping with guidelines like don't buy uprights under 48 inches or grands under six feet aren't good enough for classical training. Completely unaware of the fact that these guidelines are outdated and well, guidelines, not laws. I've played six foot used pianos that produce less tone than a brand new five foot three and five foot three used grands that have lost to a good 50 inch upright. And very rarely, you'll get some used pianos producing as much or more tone than their new equivalent. The bottom line on size is that when it comes to used, the only guidelines that really matter is what you can fit in your space. Beyond that, it's open season and let your ears do the deciding. Next on our list, the cracked soundboard myth. Now one of the most blasphemous things I could possibly come on this video and say is that cracked soundboards really aren't that bad. There's a huge component of the buying public that see cracked soundboards as absolutely the stake through the heart of a piano. But in most cases, it's nothing but an eyesore and it doesn't actually have any noticeable effect on the piano's performance. I get the emotion behind it because of its reputation as the heart and soul of a piano, most people assume that a cracked soundboard means that the piano is now worthless. It's like buying a car with a shot engine. But for customers with the stomach to go a little against the grain, so to speak, these pianos can be amongst the very best deals in the entire used piano world with very little risk. If the piano has a good sustain, it's not buzzing, and there's no evidence of unstable tuning, you're probably in for a trouble-free experience at 50 to 80% less than what it would have cost if it had not had a crack. What's even better, most of the time, simply adding humidity around the piano will make the crack completely disappear. Now, here's a giant caveat. Obviously assessing whether a crack is or will likely affect a piano's performance should be left up to someone with a lot of technical experience. So I'm not suggesting making that call without a trusted dealership or a technician involved. But the point is that it is not the death blow that it's often made out to be and almost always involves huge discounts. Up next, the incredible history of Piano X. Now this is one of the oldest tricks in the book for the piano business, but I still see it every once in a while. An otherwise lackluster piano is being pitched as having some remarkable pedigree or history to it, and the entire focus of the value and uniqueness is based on unverifiable and often fantastical claims of some pop culture relevance or connection. While pianos like this do actually exist, they almost always come with some type of documentation and proof of that special provenance. Having some background on any used piano you're buying is nice, and most of the time, the information being provided is probably true. But when it's used to justify some insane price premium, that should send a red flag immediately up. Our next mistake, pianos don't have an odometer. When you're scouring Kijiji and Craigslist for pianos, remember that each piano must be a based on its condition and current performance, even more so than size, age is practically a useless measure unless the piano is under five years old or so. A 20 year old piano that has been hardly used could be a much better buy than a 10 year old piano that's been played for two hours a day. You'll want to check the hammer condition, regulation, tuning records if available. You'll want to check the unisons to see if there are any strings that are way more out of tune than others, or work with a dealership that can perform a major service on the piano prior to sale to reset the instrument. And remember, piano ages aren't like cars or appliances. I cannot remember the number of times I've had people eliminate a 30 year old piano from contention because they'd never buy a 30 year old car. Even though piano was in a brilliant condition, and it was a perfect fit for their budget and needs. Next mistake, and this is a huge one, assuming that used is always a better deal than new. So all pianos degrade, and used pianos are normally priced based on how they're performing and the kind of maintenance costs that they need to stay at that performance level. Just like when you're buying a used Land Rover or Mercedes, they are fractions of their original cost, but that's for good reason. Instead of paying for it all up front, the actual cost of ownership has been shifted 
from the purchase price to the maintenance cost. And while the maintenance cost of a used piano is normally less than the savings you realize against a new one, there's also a performance sacrifice. Used pianos usually have smaller dynamic range, uneven voicing, sometimes tubby bass strings, or loosen mechanics. When you fully assess what's going to inspire you or your child to play, things like dead bass strings or weird ringing or an untutable treble note or even loose keys may not be worth the savings when compared with a similar new piano. A great experience is worth something. So don't forget to factor that into your decision on whether you're going with used or new. Moving right along to our next mistake, ignoring digital pianos as an option. There have been huge leaps in digital technology from more realistic and durable actions to speaker performance and sound technology. And a lot of teachers are unfamiliar with how musically capable these digitals have become. A medium to high quality acoustic piano in good condition, new or used, is still a more immersive musical experience. But what nearly everybody forgets is that most owners don't maintain acoustic pianos beyond their bare minimum, which means that for probably six to nine months a year, a high quality digital piano is likely going to give a more consistent playing experience in terms of what a beginning student or hobbyist adult player needs from that instrument. In a lot of ways, judging a used piano in a showroom, particularly against a digital option, is like judging a groom on his wedding day. You're looking at the theoretical best, but it's not likely to be your average daily experience unless you really work at it. So when you're deciding whether digital piano should be in the mix versus say a used, Consider the consistency of the experience in addition to the initial musical impressions. Moving right along, buying a piano with unusual or outdated features. Unlike a cracked soundboard, there are other piano oddities that fly under the radar for most buyers, but in fact can have just as negative an impact on future resale value. Even though these peculiarities may not mean much to you, it could spell major problems in trying to find a new buyer even with major discounts if you decide to sell the used piano down the road. It doesn't mean that it should be completely off limits, but you should be anticipating how the used market will react to those features and how that should factor into the price that you're paying now. So what are these unusual features I'm talking about? Well, although there can be great vintage German grand pianos with say two pedals, generally speaking, two pedals instead of three or a bass sustain as the middle pedal will eliminate a lot of aspiring classical students and professionals as possible buyers for your piano. As well, uprights with spinet actions or missing mute systems could also be future deal killers, as well as any pianos with less than 88 notes. Even more common are missing labels or serial numbers or major cabinetry changes like a removed piece of molding or poorly painted over original finish. So if you have fallen in love with such a piano, don't necessarily run away from the option, but do ensure that you have realistic expectations for the future value of that instrument if resold again. Up next, not buying locally seasoned pianos. Now, before people start to think this is some spiel against gray market pianos, it is 100% not. I never bought into the negative hype around these, particularly since that narrative was largely driven by Yamaha themselves as a way to protect their North American dealers from their own used product flooding in from Japan in the 90s and the 2000s. But as history has now shown us, there's absolutely nothing inherently wrong with buying a used piano that was made in or for one region and enjoying it in another. It doesn't mean that there wasn't a nugget of truth to those warnings though. A piano owned in Japan for 20 years and then immediately brought to North America in the dead of winter is gonna go through some major stresses as it adjusts to a much lower humidity in a very short period of time. But adjust it will, and if there haven't been any major stresses or damage because of it after one, two years, it's unlikely that any are going to show up subsequently. So here's my advice. Almost irrespective of brand, age, or country of origin, when buying a used instrument, it's best to find something that's been within your local climate or one very similar to it for at least a few seasonal cycles. That's going to ensure that you're evaluating the piano in a stabilized state. The country of origin or original destination is, at that point, entirely irrelevant. Next up, don't worry, we'll fix that. This unfortunately is a classic and extremely common problem. There are dozens and dozens of established, trustworthy piano dealers all throughout the world who have been dealing in used pianos for decades and have the facilities, the reputation, and know-how to ensure that the pianos are properly vetted, renewed, 
and prepared for new owners. There are also hundreds of small pop-up dealers who sell almost exclusively imported used pianos or lesser known Chinese brands at razor thin margins with no capacity to perform any meaningful service to the instrument before or after the sale. Now, this doesn't mean that some of those pianos they're selling are not worthy of your consideration. But what it does mean is that their ability to address any technical concerns or requests will be limited and with so little profit involved, their desire to do so is even less. If you have any questions, requests, or concerns about the instrument, ensure that you have a chance to evaluate that work prior to delivery or full payment so that you're not left counting on an empty promise of, don't worry, we'll fix that. And finally, all warranties are the same. So here's a good rule. Don't rely on a warranty that's longer than the business offering it is old. A 10 year old warranty from a business that's only two years old isn't worth nearly as much as say a five year old warranty from a business with 20 years of history. Now, I'm not casting any judgment on how long a warranty you should or shouldn't be seeking or whether a store that offers one year, 10 year or lifetime is good or bad. That's up to you to decide based on your risk tolerance and the price you're paying. But what I am saying is that the piano business is a volatile one and many smaller shops are only there to sell through a few ocean containers of imported Yamaha U1s and a lot of the warranties that get issued aren't worth the paper they're printed on. Dig a little deeper into what the warranty entails, whether the business has both a history of standing by its obligations as well as an actual technical capacity to fulfill them, and don't make the mistake of chasing the longest warranty period you can find. If it's too good to be true, it usually is. Thanks so much for checking out our 10 biggest mistakes used piano shoppers make. We hope it's been helpful, and if you enjoyed the video, give us a like and a subscribe since we'd love to see you back as a regular viewer here on the channel. My name is Stu Harrison, this has been Marion Pianos on YouTube, and we'll see you again soon.